Hello, and welcome to The Strange Take, where we discuss topics and talk about current events and all the fun stuff. And of course, we have The Strange Take on it, that other opinion, (laughs) whatever people may want to call it, as long as it's not hurting anybody's feelings, right? That's the most important thing, because... can't really relax if you're getting pissed off or or your feelings are being hurt. So, you know, today uh, I was thinking about, you know, rash decisions, you know, watching with the currents of COVID and mask wearing and stuff like that. And and some of the decisions people make, you know, we'll say they're in the the grocery store or the, the big box store or, you know, wherever it may be that you're allowed inside of, and there's that person and their mask's under their nose. Hmm. 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 Well, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos, people saying stuff, and and uh, it usually goes bad, so maybe I just won't say anything. I'll just, I'll just be quiet. Keep it to myself, right? Maybe... Maybe it's one of those days where I've just been bothered by a lot of things. I'm racing around, uh, stressed about whatever, and, and pow, I make this rational decision. Or not rational, but, uh, um, geez, that's the total opposite word I'm looking to use. But, you know, like a, a compulsive decision or a, uh, uh, just you know, just a quick decision, something, you know, where... Where you, uh, you know, maybe allow the word bias. Maybe bias would cover it best. The biasness of your thought process kick in. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, you fucking asshole, pull your mask up over your fucking nose. <clears throat> or you're like, well, I'm going to pull mine down then too. Hmm. Right? So, you know, it's always those two sides of the story, right? You know, and, uh, you know, people always want to know, okay, well, you're talking about it. What are your thoughts and feelings, right? Where do you stand on it? So we know how to, you know, process what you're saying, right? Well, for one, it's like leaving your coffee in front of an open window and it gets cold. Or smoking a cigar and inhaling it all the time like a cigarette. You know, drinking your whiskey with pop all the time. Or having clam in your beer all the time. <clears throat> you know. Just things, biases, all these crazy things, you know, like it's a rational decision all of a sudden is, you know, uh, the mask and and, and the wearing of, of the mask. It's, it's important. It's a community thing. It's, it's a support. Support. It's even if you don't like wearing the fucking mask. And I tell you, nobody really likes wearing the mask. Some people do, like some real fugly people, you know. And uh, and that could be anybody, right? A fugly person could be like this really good looking person. A fugly person could be a really fugly person. <laughs> okay, well, that sounded bad, but, you know, maybe they're just fugly inside, right? Well, there's a lot of that nowadays. Lots of people look real pretty or good looking, but you get talking. And, hey, maybe I'm fugly inside and out and don't even know it, right? As long as my wife doesn't, you know. Tell me that I'm fugly. Trying out one of these great big fat cigars. I see these guys on my Facebook site all the time. Uh, I got to do a little research and see if I'm allowed to mention Facebook sites or what have you on my podcast. But it's actually quite an enjoyable experience. I, I find, you know, if I'm going to sit here and share my thoughts by myself to a phone, it's recording my voice to replay back to people to listen to. You know, I might as well enjoy it. Well, a nice cigar. Or not. You know, I don't always have a cigar. You know, as long as you're in the ashtray picking through all the cigarette butts looking like the first cigar butt. <laughs> you know, those cigar pickers. Cigaretters. But anyways, back to the, um, see, getting bias, right? Bias, bias, bias all over the place. Look at this guy's talking about bias. Gets all sidetracked. But honestly, you know, rash decision making and 
you know, and, uh, and just quick, quick, impulsive decision making, like, oh, you know, I'm reacting to reactive decision making. You know, sometimes it can be really good. It's like an athlete or we'll say like a manager and uh, they're running this crew and they're like, hey, you got to do this and you do that. And then I'm going to pull you over here and make you do that. And they're like, well, why do I got to do that for you? And it's like, well, you know why? Because you, you do, I told you to. Because if you tell them the truth, you're going to hurt their feelings. And be like, no, because you suck at doing that. So I'm going to have you do that because you do it really good. And it's just the part of saying, well, you suck at doing that. That's that's where the whole conversation can either begin or end, right? But, I mean, or a hockey player. You know, he's coming down the ice. Connor, you know, Connor McDavid, here he comes. Ah, make it like 20 minutes, five passes, scores, right? You know, well, it's quick decision-making. I think half the time these guys, they suffer from what's called um, quick brain and slow brain and uh, in looking at biasness and just bias, right? And a lot, I think a lot of time hockey players just, you know, they get the puck and they say, oh, wrist shot at the net, right? You know, go for, go for the top corner and they always miss. It's always hitting the boards behind the net. And it's because that compulsive thought doesn't meet the physical needs or their physical needs don't meet that compulsive thought. Now, if the puck came a little slower and there was no defense guy there, he gets the puck, you get that extra microsecond, so maybe that's the difference between the quick thought and slow thought. Now he's like, hey, click, 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 boom, boom. It's like TikTok video. Dun, 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 dun. You know where they do that dance and they move their hands in and out and the camera bobs up and down. It's always this blonde hair girl doing it. Some young guy, I think they're all down in Vegas or New York. I don't know. Maybe they travel the world doing those. But anyways, you know, getting sidetracked again. Sorry. But, I mean, uh, you know, it's like a hockey player or, or you know, MMA fighter. He's like, you know, hey, put your hands up. He just won't put his hands up. He's getting punched, but he's going for these big kind of strikes by keeping your hands down. You're allowed to do better, you know. And, and hey, maybe I'm wrong, right? It's probably some MMA guys. If they ever listen, they'd be like, Who the, what the fuck is this guy talking about, right? So, you know, but anyways. But I think that, you know, when we look at society and culture, people have twisted and bent and used the meaning of bias to kind of alter the way we all look at things. And I find a lot of times, you know, um, I've had all kinds of, you know, training um, in my line of work for, you know, being open to to um, when you're managing people or you're, you know, in charge of people, however you may look at it or what your career title is. You know, like when you're hiring somebody, you know, you, you got to be... Biasness, and and they claim that, well, you know, usually a guy, a white guy's going to hire a white guy, and it's like, well, fuck you, who says that, you know? So I'm listening to my training, and and I understand because I got to remember, there's not a lot of people like me, right? That's why I got a strange take, but uh, you know, my whole life, I've never been racist. I've always respected women. Everyone's the same and equal. There's people that can do better things than I can. And there's things I can do better than other people can. It doesn't matter color they are. What I mean, I'm telling you right now, like, when I was growing up, all the, all the guys were, yeah, when I was young, I guess, maybe, because they were all, like, white kids. You know, we had, like, a couple kids that were ethnic. And, uh, but some of the girls, I was like, wow, look at her. I'm like, I just fall in love with that brown girl. She's from India. Oh, she's so pretty. You know, she's got a big red dot right between her eyes, and I didn't care. I just thought she was the prettiest thing in the world, you know. Just, just love them brown girls growing up. And I love girls when I was growing up from everywhere. You know, oh, I'm in a, in a, oh, my wife's got a million terms for what we are, you know. <laughs> but you could say multiracial marriage. You know, or whatever people want to call it. I don't even give a fuck, right? If she gets cut, she bleeds red. I get cut, I bleed red. You know, that's how I am. But sometimes I find them all this training kind of like really offensive because it's like I don't even look at anything like that. And then, and then there's, you know, oh, people who have chosen different genders and different lifestyles. I got no problem with that. I don't, it's not my place to judge it. Well, you're kind of a Christian. Yeah, so what? doesn't mean I make judgment on people or anything. Maybe I'm not a Christian. Maybe I am. I Fuck all I know is I respect, you know, my beliefs are God and Jesus. Yeah, and, but I don't, I've been taught like, oh, those people choose to have a different gender, so you got to hate them. They're devils. It doesn't say that in the Bible. It says Jesus judged 
people the way he chooses. Not my place to do that. Who made me Jesus, right? Not me. I'm not going to walk around. And you know, let's stay out of religion this time because the religious podcast could really go on and cause a lot of problems because I'm an outspoken person, I guess, on that. But, uh, you know, I don't judge anybody. And I think that... You know, well, anybody can be my friend. I can sit down at a table with a whole bunch of people. You know, someone married to a horse and someone who's chosen, you know, to, to whatever. You know, well, maybe married to a horse. I'd be like, well, I'm sorry about it. I'm just not interested. It's just, I don't feel like there's anything. I just can't help it. It's like in the movie, um, what the hell was it? The fucking English spy guy. I think it's like mole. It's mole. <laughs> you know, you just can't help it. It's like you're married to a horse. Oh my God. But, I mean, people who have made choices in their, to express themselves or how they feel about their gender or their their body or, you know, I don't care. Come and hang out as long as you've got something nice to say and, you know, we got something in common. I mean, you can't like, oh, I'm just going to hang out with you because, you know, I want to be... I want to be dynamic in in my association, uh, you know, with the society and my community. No, pfft, fuck off, right? That's a whole bunch of crock of shit. That's, like, called safe talk. And, like, I... I I'm even a victim of safe talk. I do it all the time because you get scared of the repercussions. Like social media just eats you alive. And uh, if you say something that one person or group doesn't agree with, but we always got to remember, as long as if somebody's talking like outside of safe talk, then that person doesn't hold, you know, any kind of reservation against anybody or anything, you know. I mean, hey, we've all had our bad experiences. We all got a story, but... It's nothing a cigar and a whiskey not mixed with pop can't fix. Unfortunately, I don't drink anymore, so I'm not supposed to be having my cigars. So when my wife hears this, I'm in big trouble. (laughs) Well, better than hanging out at the bar all night. But I guess they're all closed now, so I'm sure there's some people who don't wish the bar was open. (laughs) Hey, you wouldn't be home right now. Watch my show. Anyways, you know, we always got a lot to say, and I think it's important that, you know, everybody remembers, like, you know, if you're in a situation that there's a lot to it. I mean, look at what we all just talked about here, well, I talked about, with being biased, and and remember that, you know, in that quick second, there's a little portion of your brain that does really quick thinking, and if it's not routined, if it's not something you're routine in doing, I mean, some some people can just turn around and like have mouth you right off in the parking lot because they're routine to it. Like they fight with their siblings or their parents at home or or their spouse or their better half or whatever you want to call it. You know, everybody's got, you know, if they do that a lot, then they're going to be really good at it. So be careful because you don't want to get in a showdown with someone who's got a lot of bias where their quick thinking brain can really just chow you up, make you look like a goof where you got to get physical because it's the only way you can redeem yourself, right? So, you know, and usually that's chicks. <laughs> Women have really good, quick thinking brains. Fuck, it's, it's they're too smart nowadays. They got us, <laughs> us dudes, <laughs> or whoever we are. Doesn't matter. All of us gender neutrals. We're all victim. Everybody to the woman and the power that they have now because they're so smart. I love my wife, but. uh Yeah, you know, just those quick thoughts. Just always remember that. Hey, you know, this is a quick thinking thing. This is bias. I have to be careful of my everyday reactions to this. And, you know, and, uh, or in a situation where you know, like, hey, give me a minute. I need to think about this for a minute. So you can put some slow thought, slow brain, you know, into, you know, some slow brain process into it, which is what allows you to make more efficient and proper decisions. So just some words from some guy. On a strange take, on a crazy world, in a crazy time, basically on the topic of language. Take care, everybody. Tune in next time. We'll have something else cool to talk about.